Justice, and it's an honor to be here this afternoon and stand up here with uh, the governor that has taken West Virginia from January of 17 of a deficit of $700 million. When I, when I joined the governor, that's the first financial report we looked at. West Virginia had a $700 million deficit from January to June in 2017. Now, as we stand here five years later, I'm proud to report to you that fiscal year 22 was the greatest financial year in the history of the state of West Virginia. Our revenue projection, our revenue was 22% increase from 21 to 22. We have set record after record after record, but guess what? We looked at our financial reports yesterday. We met with the governor. Year to date, fiscal year 23, we're almost a quarter in. Our revenue growth is up 28% compared to 22% last year. So we keep setting financial records in West Virginia. And what the governor has said to us, the Department of Revenue, is let's come up with a way that we can responsibly start returning our tax dollars back to the people of West Virginia. And we have developed a plan. The plan is starting off with a 10% income tax cut that takes effect immediately. That will put $271 million back into the paychecks of working West Virginians immediately upon passage by the West Virginia legislature. So the governor's plan is well thought out, and it is an idea that's going to make West Virginia move forward. If you look across the country, you see all the states, all of them, nine different states that don't have an income tax are setting records for growth. West Virginia is starting to become a state where telework is going to be part of our future. And part of our way of attracting population to our state is to put cut our income tax with the goal of eventually trying to eliminate our income tax. So, Governor, you have vision, and your vision is showing here with the idea that we are going to repeal West Virginia's income tax over the next few years. Contrast that, and I'm a former county commissioner. I was a county commissioner for 16 years in Kanawha County. I know what it's like to be a county commissioner, and I was a city councilman for six years. You have, at the city and county level, and I see Rocky Romano out there, you know exactly what I'm talking about. You have a guaranteed revenue source, guaranteed in the Constitution of West Virginia, that's going to provide you the revenue that we need to provide for our cities, our 234 municipalities, our 55 counties, and our 55 school systems. All have a constitutional guaranteed revenue source, yet there's an attack on this revenue source today, and it's called Amendment 2. The legislature has put on the ballot for this fall an amendment that if it's passed, is going to be a shipwreck, a train wreck, a base budget disaster for the state of West Virginia. We're asking you, the counties, to come to the legislature with your hat in your hand every year and replace the revenue that you've lost, and it's $450 million, is going to be taken away from cities, counties, and schools by this amendment too. Of that amount, of that 450, and I might add the legislature decided they'd go to 550 million, only a third of it is going to be returned to the people of West Virginia. The rest of it is going to be sent to subsidize large out-of-state companies. So the governor's plan, 200, $271 million immediately to the working people of West Virginia versus Amendment 2, rob the cities and the counties, rob the, rob the school boards, and then give two-thirds of it away to large companies. So I think it's pretty obvious where we need to be as West Virginians. And I'd like to add the Department of Revenue, we have vetted this plan over and over and over. The governor's plan is well received. It's been well received by Wall Street, our bonding agencies, 
and it is the way to go for the people of West Virginia. The, the Amendment 2, disaster. We will have a budget disaster that will continue for years and years. So that being said, I'm going to turn it over to the governor that has taken us from financial wilderness to record-breaking revenue in five and a half years. Governor Jim Justice. Governor. Okay. Now, I won't be, I won't be nearly as sophisticated, and I won't be as long, you know, because Dave likes to talk. Uh, I appreciate you standing up and everything else. We've got some more chairs over here, but, but if I'm sitting down, I'd really welcome you to sit. But uh, let me just tell you just this. The state of West Virginia is doing really good. Really, really good. From the standpoint of our location, if you'll just think just a second about it, we're within the rocks throw of two thirds of the population of this whole country. And for them to get to a state that doesn't have any personal income tax, they can drive right through us. Now, the personal income tax situation and how we go about doing that is a little complicated, but the problem is just this. It's a little complicated, but you really need to understand. You really need to understand what you're dealing with here. I mean, I can't say it any more blunt than just this. I have tried and tried and tried to sit, negotiate, whatever it may be, and come up with a methodology with the House to the Senate, and the House is right on my side and all that kind of stuff, but the Senate is standing in their way. And they're standing in their way because oftentimes this happens in Charleston. And let's just be really fair. You know, the legislature, you know, said they want Amendment 2 going about. Well, I'm all for the voters doing whatever the voters want to do, because the voters always get it right. But the problem with this is this. This is now mushroomed into a situation that really many of the delegates or many of the senators that probably signed on today, they don't want to sign on. And really, what you need to do is not feel badly because they voted to sign on in the beginning. They didn't realize what is fixing to happen. Now, just, just let me just put it in just the simplest of terms. If I were Charleston, and I came to you and said, give me your wallets, and give me all your money, and I promise I'll give it back, and I'm a politician, Is that really what you want to do? And when you go in and you vote for Amendment 2, that's exactly what you're doing. We can't be this dumb. We just cannot be this dumb to do this. And on top of all that, on top of all that, you know, Charleston is running with a very, very high risk game. Our secretary is vetted this from Indiana. The machinery and inventory tax, now just think about it. You're talking about a guy right here that would benefit by millions from getting rid of my machinery and inventory tax. But you see, I never signed on for that, did I? I signed on for you. And that's what I think I ought to do. And I don't think you understand this. But at the end of the day, the beneficiary of the machinery and inventory tax has nothing to do with you it has you putting everything at risk that more people will come. How many businesses are coming to West Virginia today? We can't even keep up with it. How many of them are asking me and saying to me, I'll come if we get rid of the machine and inventory tax? Zero. Zero. But if we turn around and give all this money back to these big companies and take away your funding source for the firemen, policemen, schools, I mean, EMSs, whatever it may be, and then just put your money in Charleston, and then the economy turned down just a little bit. You're dead meat. You're dead meat. Now, at the end of the day, 
the 10% on, on the income tax, we could do a whole lot more than that today. But to 10, now, now people, people say, well, well, Justice, why aren't you, in, uh, you know, in favor of the, uh, getting rid of the automobile tax? But Justice would be in favor. If we, if we said today, let's get rid of that, and let's apply all the course of the personal income tax, I'd be right there. You can't do it all on day one. The personal income tax, if we grew into it, is $2.2 billion. Right now, right now, if you put the 10%, uh, the, the program that's been, you know, thrown our way now is, well, let's do the automobile, let's do the 10% on the income tax, and let's do the machinery inventory tax all one time. It's a billion dollars. If you're willing to sign on to that, give your right away of your income stream and bet on Charleston, I think you're dumb buddies. That's all there is to it. I don't think you're going to do that. But somebody's got to tell you. Somebody's got to explain how toxic Amendment 2 can be. Amendment 2 is driven by the same things that Charleston can be that really Washington, D.C. is. It can be a swamp. It can be a place where lobbyists pass out money and big corporations rule the day. I like it or not like it, but I'm there. I'm there and I see it all the time. Now, I'm not that guy. You didn't elect me to be that guy. You elected me to absolutely be the person that stood up for the people. And absolutely, I know in my heart, if we don't change this, and I've tried, my God, living, I've tried to I'm blue-green. I have tried to absolutely not have us just walk off the, pl the plank and let the people get hurt. I believe that the people are going to get hurt. And that's not acceptable to me. So at the end of the day, here's how I feel. If we go out and we vote it in, I'll at least be able to look right back at you and say, I told you. I told you. Now listen, there's not, there's surely not enough folks right here for us to absolutely sure without, with all, without any question that Amendment 2 is not going to pass. But you have voices. And you better get busy. You really better get busy. Because there's going to be an avalanche of money and the money is going to be commercials. And the commercials going to be, is going to be driven by those that are corporations that benefit. That really benefit. You know, we've got to stop it. Now I'll answer any question you choose to answer, ask me. And uh, if I can't answer them, Dave Hardy will answer them. But we've vetted this and vetted this and vetted this. You got a, a storm brewing and nobody's saying anything about it. And they're hoping it's just going to slip right under the, 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 the mat and boom, it's done. It's really, really dangerous. Now look, last thing, my last, my last. You said, justice always tells the truth. Justice, serve. Serve. Do what our forefathers did. I mean, for God's sakes, I live and I drive myself. The state police loses me all the time. Then again, get real nervous and everything. But I've done exactly all those things. I have told you the truth. I have served. And just as mind our store, make our store a better place to live. And I hope to goodness you'll have to say, we've done that. And we're continuing to do it. And the last thing I would say to you is just simply just this. Justice, tell us, please tell us if something is about to bite us. Justice, the pandemic is here. Handle it, Justice. I hope you know that I've done that. And that's why I'm here today. I'm not in a popularity contest. I don't want to get in a food fight with the Senate. I don't want to get in a food fight with the House. I'm not in the food fight. I don't have time for it. I don't have time for it at all. I'm telling you without any question, this is a very, very, very dangerous step that you're about to take, and most people don't have any idea what they're about to do. Now, ask me a question if you choose to do so. Okay, no question.
here asking, and we're all wondering, will baby doll be making, will baby doll be making a cheer Tyler? I mean, I'm trying so hard. Oh my God, I'm mighty nice. All right, baby doll, get her, get her. Let's do, let's do this. When I get through, baby doll will be sitting right here, and I'll I'll any of y'all can come up and say hi to baby doll. And let's just stay focused for a second on, on on something that's really really dangerous. Yes, sir. Okay, please. Sure, sure, you know, really and truly, and and understand, you know, I could have vetoed it, what would have happened? Override. Instantly. None of us believed that this could, I mean, I really, I was asleep at the switch too. None of us believed, legislatures nor I, that the magnitude of what we could be faced with is coming. This. I mean, just think about it. If if I if I'm not here, who's bringing the issue up about getting rid of your personal income tax? I mean, I had the Federal Reserve in my office just the other day. The first question they said is, "What's wrong with with people in West Virginia?" Well, it's not the people. It's not the people at all. What's wrong with the fact you not realize that getting rid of your personal income tax would drive growth, drive every opportunity under the sun to you? put all kinds more money people in people's pocket and everything. You know, well, of course I realize that. Well, why aren't, we, why aren't we even talking about it? If I'm not here, we'd be machinery and inventory. We would never, ever mention it. And you would put yourself at real risk. You would take your local source of revenue away, and you would depend on Charleston. And if things turn, think about when I walked in the door. What's the guarantee of us not going back to there? What would Charleston do with your money if we were there? I mean, all of a sudden they may say to you, well, we're going to have to do a 40% cut to police, to education, to firemen, to EMSs in your camp. Sorry, sorry, that's just what we're going to have to do. Now they can tell you you're going to get more money. Well, if you buy that, that's up to you. It's just like me saying what I said in the beginning. Give me your money out of your wallet, I'm going to give it back. If you buy that, more power to you, you know. All right, come here, baby doll. Baby doll, I'm talking to you. Come on over here. Baby doll's not for this. Come on, baby. Come on. Liz, y'all can come up and say hi to baby doll in a minute, okay? Thank you. Yes, sir. Yeah, you know, the one thing got me you said it earlier, too, the one thing people hear is the continuation of nobody wants to come here because of this tax. I think the realization should be how many businesses have come here since last year and continue to come. This tax is not even in place. I think for me, talking to groups has been a misconception. Business withdrawals of businesses that's a set aside for them. But in reality, as you think you're part of the tenant also, we've got the businesses coming and they continue. And I think that's one of the big points to be addressed. The taxpayers, along with giving up their approval, which I think is the big part that people miss in that matter. Well, if for, for those of you who couldn't hear, you know, the, 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 mis the representation that, well, businesses won't come here because we have this tax. Well, first of all, ask yourself, for God's sakes, living, are they coming? I mean, we can't keep up with the request. I mean, are they coming? And the other flip side of it is because we have surpluses and we can be competitive with other states, we're basically helping, you know, be able to promote and, and help them to be able to come. If this be the case, you ain't going to have any surpluses. You can forget that. You can forget that possibility. You know? Now, and so... 
So with all, all that being said, now just, just think for a second. You know, think about every surrounding state around you having lower income tax, state income tax than you. Think, think about, you know, why in the world, if these novel ideas will work, I mean, I hate to say this, but I've given myself in trouble about this, but we had tried things before I got there. We tried the idea of build a field and they'll come, but they didn't come. And then we had to start down a path of just common sense and logic. And I'm telling you without any question, that the personal income tax is rock solid, proven, proven. And without any question on top of that, if you look at all these publications, you know, states that have no machinery and inventory tax versus states that are on a pathway of getting rid of their personal income tax, you have giant growth, no growth. That's what you got. But what you're being told, because these people just eat and breathe it and live and everything, because there's people that are putting money to them. I mean, honest to Pete, that's, do you realize that's the swamp we're talking about? Big corporations give big money to be able to have stuff for big corporations. You just remember this. With all my soul, I'm telling you gospel facts. To me, it would mean millions of dollars in my pocket tomorrow. Millions of dollars in my pocket if we pass the machinery and inventory tax. And I'm standing right here with baby dogs saying, please, please. You see, I'm not here. I have never been here. I've never been here. I want to be with you. And I'm going to stand with you. And I'm going to fight for you. And then at the end of the day, if you decide that that's what you want to do, I'm not going to stand up and say, oh, this is the craziest thing I've ever heard in my life. I'm going, to just, I'm going to just go on. And as I go on, you know, if you come up to me, I'll probably say, I tried to tell you. But uh, it's not good. Any, uh, somebody else? Yes, ma'am. It is true, though, that it's giving the legislators the right to take away. That is not actually going away. Now say what now? That it's giving the legislators the right to take away. That is not actually going away. No, no. That's, that's, that's another problem with this thing. Is They have the right to be able to do this. Now, understand and, and, and I would say you know first and foremost I'm a Republican through and through I did support this man right here you know President Trump I'm absolutely a believer in conservative values you've seen that but I would tell you in any situation when you get when you get super 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 majorities in something you know, sometimes it may end up not being good too, you know, because, you know, Charleston then becomes in a situation to where you don't have real opinions, you, you can dictate whatever you want to dictate. And when leadership comes up with an idea that may be out in left field, then everybody feels like they have a, you know, an obligation to stay on the team. And, and even though they may think uh, otherwise, you know, I believed wholeheartedly with the Senate from the standpoint they just let the people vote and not pressure them, just let the people vote. You know, we would we would already have had a 10% income tax thing, you know, cut and we'd already be on our way. We wouldn't let them vote, even vote. You know, so uh, you're correct, you're dead level correct in this. By the passing of Amendment 2 does not mean that any specific law has passed. All you've done is you've just handed them the keys to Emerald City and said, you guys decide everything. You've taken all the control from the counties and given it to Charleston and say, you boys decide. Man, I'm telling you, that's not the thing to do in my book. Governor, we're on, on my end, I'm hearing some really good arguments for this. 
and uh, and my constituents are confused, honestly. So how do we get that information out to everyone so they look so that they're able to see both sides of this? Because right now they're hearing one, you know, it, depending on where you are, you're hearing more on one side, and and then you hear the other. So it, it, you know how people are, or they, they're confused. They want to know what. Where do we go? What do we do? Well, it's a, it's a spot-on question, and it's a great question, and today is the first day that I'm out here, and I'm going to be out every day. I'm going to just be pouring on, pouring on, pouring on, and, and at the end of the day, it is so imperative to me that people hear the whole the whole picture. Today, you haven't heard that. You know, you've heard this from me, but you haven't heard it prior to today. You know, you, you may have heard a little rumble in the jungle from the county's association or maybe the, the you know, the, you know your, your teachers' associations or maybe, or, or whomever it may be, but you've not heard a big step. I'll tell you why. I'll tell you exactly why. People are afraid. People are afraid because when they stand up, you know, and if they feel like, well, this is going to pass, and they stand up, then they think, well, if I stand up and I'm Ohio County or whatever it may be, you know, and I stand up and this thing passes, then really and truly the powers to be in the state, justice isn't going to be there forever. You know, the powers to be in the state, then they're going to remember that and they'll come back on me. So people are afraid. People are afraid of power. <laughs> but that's not me. Yes, sir. However, I think the answer to the compelling argument is the fact that right now they're asking us to vote our authority over to this. So we vote no on that. We come back with the compelling argument and put that on the ballot we should vote on and then come back and say because right now their compelling argument is not agreed on by the Senate and the House. Obviously, the governor's against it. So, how does that how does that compelling argument do anything at all until that is something that we can specifically vote? Oh, that's exactly right. And you've got to tell all your folks that. You've got to tell them. You know, I always tell people, tell your in-laws and outlaws everything. You know, because we'll all be better off if we have knowledge, knowledge, you know, at the end of the day, you just got to remember just one thing. Uh, I don't have time to, well, I mean, I don't want you standing. I mean, I'd sit here all day with you, but literally at the end of the day, there is a real way to get rid of your state income tax. There's a real way to put so much money and potential growth and everything into all of us. There's a real way. And, and, and in the days to come, I hope you really pay really attention to the being the real way. We're not gonna go through all that at this time. But the situation of, with, with Amendment 2 is as simple as just this. What they want to do, they told us. What they want to do absolutely will help large corporations and it will not do doodly for the workers of the state of West Virginia. Now, as far as the machinery and inventory tax, it ain't going to do anything. They put with it the automobile tax elimination to get your vote. Now say what you want, but that's what they've done. And it's really not, I mean, it, it probably is pretty smart because as long as you stay dormant, they had you hoodwinked to get your vote. Why are they doing this? Why in the world are they doing this? We are getting signing up company after company after company wanting to come to West Virginia. Why are they doing it? And it's nothing but the swamp. Do you not see that? It's money. It's money going around Charleston, going around and around and around. It's money from the standpoint that says, I'm going to give you this much money in your campaign fund, and then you run for the next highest office. It's, it's a swamp. 
that's exactly what the why. And the net of the whole thing is, at the end of the day, sir, you're right. If they had a specific idea that they wanted to bring and put on the ballot and let the people vote about it, tell us. Tell us what it is. You know, they're not doing that. They're basically saying what I said in the beginning. Give me all your money, and just depend on me as a politician, I'm going to spend your money the right way. Or I'm going to send it back to you. You can't be this. You cannot be that naive. And, but you don't know. You don't know. And I, I tried, and I tried, and I tried, and I tried to talk sense into their heads and just to, to absolutely do the right thing for people that I call Toby and Edith. Because Toby and Edith are what matters to me. Now they can say whatever they want. But I don't take money from lobbyists. I don't want money. I don't want the next hot tip. I don't want anything. You know, and at the end of the day, all of them are looking, or many of them are looking for what's the next highest office I can run for? What's the way that I can get the next hot tip? It's a swamp. My God, living, you look at the number of politicians in D.C. And just think about them for a second. How did they get that fool rich? They got that way off of you. They haven't even had a job, a lot of them, ever. They got that way off of you. That's not me. It's not baby dog either. If you don't have any other questions, y'all come up here and say hi to baby dog and we'll leave. Y'all get to work. Thank y'all. <laughs>